Wayne. Today's project aboard the Bayou is going to be repairing a AirX wind generator. I have two of these mounted on the stern, and one of them quit working a while ago. So what we're going to do is take the generator apart, do a little bit of troubleshooting to find out exactly what's wrong with it, and then go ahead and try to fix it. Hopefully we will fix it. Uh, the symptoms I'm getting from the generator is I'm getting no output. It's just showing absolutely nothing. And with the AirX wind generators, when you put it into uh, park mode or brake mode, you're basically shorting out the positive and negative terminals from the generator together, which creates resistance in the generator so that the blades only turn slowly. But that's not working either. So it looks like I have some sort of major failure going on. Now I have taken the time to check the fuse at the bottom of the wind generator because I have a fuse box installed there just right at the base of the generator and that fuse is okay so the wiring to the generator seems alright. So the next thing I did is take the generator off of the pole in order to check it. Really couldn't tell much just from the generator laying on the bench. So I guess the next step now is going to be to take it apart and do a little bit of troubleshooting. We know the basic symptoms. We're not getting any output, and we don't seem to be able to put it in brake mode. This would indicate some sort of major failure or disconnect in the wiring in it. So let's go ahead and take this sucker apart and see what we got. I will confess, I have already done this, and this video is just sort of a recap. The reason I've already done it is twofold. One, I've never done one of these before, so I wanted to see what was in there. And of course, the second one is I don't want to make a video when I don't know what I'm doing and look like an idiot. So, I've already taken it apart and done the troubleshooting, but I'm going to go through all the procedures I went through taking it apart just so that you'll see exactly what I did. Now, when working on these generators, um, the first thing you're going to have to do is remove the hub with the blades. Now, I, I've already done that for the sake of simplicity so that I can work on it in here, but just real quick for those who don't know, normally you can have the, um, the blades on the hub and take it all off as one assembly. You can use, um, this one's a little small, but you can use a uh, large Allen key to fit into the center of the hub and then just an adjustable wrench or other wrench right around the nut. And then you just take that off. Obviously I got that loose and there's a lock washer in there. And then the hub just comes off. Now what we've got is, is the, um, the outer casing to the wind generator and there's three Allen head screws that you need to take off in order to get this whole assembly out. Now, I've, uh, like I said, I've already loosened these up. Another point is these are metric, at least on this unit they are. I'm assuming on all units they're going to be metric. So you'll need a metric Allen wrench to get this. And you can just take those apart. Next thing, sometimes, I, so far I've found I've taken two of these generators apart so far and, and this hub assembly just comes right off. That said, if you need to do a little bit of gentle prying to break it loose, you can do that in there with a screwdriver. But you want to be careful because there's an O-ring in around there and you don't want to damage that O-ring unless, of course, you plan on replacing it. So once that's broken loose, you can pop this whole assembly loose and it comes loose pretty easily. And that is your generator unit. In here you have the stator on the outside and the rotor, the part that turns around with the wiring going to the circuit board on the inside of the unit. The next assembly you have is um, the gimbal bearing, and or yaw, yaw assembly, I believe they call it. And this allows the unit to rotate. You can see on this yaw that rotates, we have three copper rings. Each one of these rings is called a slip ring and on the back side of it is a brush that contacts the slip ring. That's what allows the unit to spin around 360 without any problem, and that's important. So when troubleshooting this unit, we've got basically three assemblies, the yaw, yaw uh, assembly with a bearing in it. We have the circuit board, which is the controller board and voltage regulator, and we have the generator itself, which consists of the rotor, and the winding. Now with troubleshooting, I always start from the beginning and work my way to the end. Um, sometimes I would start at the power end, check to make sure I was getting output power, and follow that through. 
this is a pretty simple assembly and my guess is the generator unit is probably okay because it really doesn't consist of that that many parts all we got is the rotor and there's really nothing that can go wrong with the rotor other than the bearings in this assembly which you can lay right off the stator, you could have a stator failure in the wiring or short in there but this is pretty robust wire and i think that's fairly unlikely so what i'm going to do with the troubleshooting you start from the other end. I'm going to start with the input wires, follow them back to the circuit board, and through the brush. All that looks like it's working okay. Then the next step will be to check the power output on the generator itself. If both of those are good, I know the control board is bad. And what I'm going to do is use a volt ohm meter, and I'm going to set that in beeper mode so that I can hear it beep when I know I have a connection. So I connect those two together, I get a beep. This way I'm going to follow this through and I'm going to check each of these wires. I'll start with the ground wire. We have three wires and three slip rings, so let's check those first. Okay, the ground one is working, good contact. I go to the red wire and that's going to be the middle ring. But I can check it on all three just to make sure and I'm getting nothing on that red wire. Good. And I've got the black wire, negative output. I'm going to check that on. And there we go. We found that one on the middle one. So black and green are the two bottom ones. Red's got to be the top. And I'm getting nothing. You could check the brushes. If you were getting continuity on all three of those, the next step would be to check the, the brush contact where the wire contacts to the circuit board. But in all honesty, we're done here because we know we have a problem. We're not getting continuity from this red wire to its slip ring. That's a problem. And it's not in the circuitry and it's not in the generator. That means it's in the yaw assembly itself and in the slip ring. Kind of an odd place for a failure, but that's where it failed. We now know that the problem is in the yaw assembly and in the slip ring. That was relatively easy to find. Didn't take a lot of high-tech equipment or anything. It was pretty simple. A little odd that it would fail in the contact to the slip ring, but I guess maybe the wire just failed inside. Problem is that slip ring assembly is all potted plastic, so there's really not much we can do. There's nothing really there to fix. So we're going to have to go ahead and replace the entire yaw assembly. And while we're at it, we probably should go ahead and replace the yaw bearing, because, I mean, we're, we're going to all this trouble to take this whole thing apart. We might as well replace the bearing while we're in there. Now fortunately, fortunately for me, I had an old Eric's wind generator that somebody gave me for free and I've just been hanging on to it to keep it for spare parts. So I checked it out and its yaw assembly is okay. Um, its bearing is not great, so I'm going to go ahead and replace bearing with a new bearing while I'm doing all of this. But the, uh, the slip rings and the wires all have good continuity, so I'm going to be able to reuse that part. But the first thing we got to do is go ahead and take this assembly apart, and I'll show you how In to order to remove this, the uh, yaw assembly, we're going to have to remove a circlip that holds the whole assembly into the bearing. Circlip is basically a circle clip. It's just a, a round spring clip with two holes in the end of it, In order, and it fits into a slot in the shaft. In order to remove that, we're going to have to remove that circlip. In order to remove the circlip, we've got a pair of circlip pliers. Now, if you don't have these on board the boat, you probably should. So these basically circlip pliers just have two little points in them. They fit into the hole on the circlip, and you press down to spread the circlip open so that you can slide it off of the shaft. So handy tool to have on board. If you don't have one, go out and get one. They're not expensive. You can get them from pretty much any auto parts store. All right. This is a little tricky because it's kind of hard to get to, but we'll try to get in there as best we can. I have to go at it from an angle. Take that a little bit. Trying to get that clip off can be a challenge. Trick is to get it spread and then be able to try to lift it up at the same time. I had a little bit of trouble getting the circlip completely out of the groove. Part of the problem was the angle I had to reach in at, and another part of the problem was the pliers tended to want to slip out of it. So what I did is got one end free and worked a screwdriver in underneath it. 
I then rotated the shaft so that the circlip would sort of roll out of the groove as it went along until it finally popped free. With the circlip removed, the next task is to push the shaft out of the bearing. But this is easier said than done. There's no way to get a gear puller on it, and the uh, slip rings are mounted in a soft plastic, so I can't really tap or bang on them because I'll damage that assembly. So the only real way I could think of doing this is to pry the two pieces apart. I did do a little checking online to see if there was a better way to do this, but this is really all I found was to simply pry the uh, shaft out of the bearing. Generally speaking, I don't like to pry on assemblies like this, but I really didn't see any other way to do it. So if anybody has any ideas, I'd certainly be glad to hear them. As the gap increased, I had to use ever larger tools to try to gently pry. And I would work my way around in a circular pattern going from side to side so that I wouldn't put too much pressure. Finally, as I got towards the end where the shaft was almost completely out, I used a cold chisel to kind of work through and gently tap it out. It took a little bit of patience, but it did finally come apart. There we go. I knew I was close. And there we go. There's our yawl assembly. <clears throat> and it doesn't look in too bad a shape, but for some reason that ring is not connecting with that wire. And look at the bearing. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. 